Hello, everybody. I just wanted to take a little bit of time to go over um, one particular uh, aspect of astronomy that um, astronomers use to quantify the brightness of stars. And that's something called the magnitude system. So essentially what the magnitude system is, is it is a numbering system that astronomers use to assign a value to the apparent brightness of a star. And again, what we mean by apparent brightness is how bright it appears to the eye. And the way that the magnitude system works is that different numbers represent different brightnesses. Now, the other thing you need to know about the magnitude system is that it is counterintuitive in that the lower the number, the brighter the star. In short, the brightest stars in the sky have the lowest magnitudes and the dimmest stars in the sky have the highest magnitude. You can think of the magnitude system as sort of a number line where the more uh, positive the number, the dimmer it is. And the magnitude system actually dips below zero into negative numbers. And so the more negative the number, the brighter it is. And zero magnitude stars are not actually zero brightness. In fact, zero magnitude stars are pretty bright stars. They're among the brightest stars in the sky. The best way to understand this is just to see examples of this. So let's take a look at this constellation you see right before you. This is the constellation Taurus, and this big bright star is the star Aldebaran. Now we're actually gonna start with this star here in the upper left. That star has a magnitude of 1.7. What does that mean? That simply means that a star that is that bright in the sky is assigned a value of 1.7. Where the magnitude system becomes valuable is when you start comparing stars to each other. So for example, if we now go to Aldebaran, it is clear that Aldebaran is a brighter star than this star here. That means that its magnitude or apparent magnitude is gonna have to be a lower number than 1.7 because remember lower numbers mean brighter stars. So the magnitude of Aldebaran should be less than 1.7. And indeed the magnitude of Aldebaran is 0 0.9 or approximately one. So if we imagine that this star has a magnitude of approximately two, and this star has a magnitude of approximately one, we can say that the star with a magnitude two is dimmer than the star with a magnitude one. Now, what you can also conclude is that all the other stars in this image are dimmer than these two stars. Therefore, you know that any other star in this image is going to have an apparent magnitude that is greater than 1.7, because remember, larger numbers mean dimmer. And since every other star in the image is dimmer than this star here, which has a magnitude of 1.7, then the other stars must have magnitudes that are greater than 1.7. So for example, this star here at the lower left has a magnitude of three. This star over here has a magnitude of 3.4, which means it's slightly dimmer than this star here. So that in a nutshell is how the magnitude system works. Now to go into a little bit more detail, the brightest stars in the night sky, the ones that you have had to label in your constellation packet, are stars that typically have magnitudes somewhere between minus one and one. Now again, that includes zero. Zero is actually a reasonably bright star. A minus one star is even brighter than that. And a one star is a little bit dimmer than a zero star, but is still a fairly bright star. So basically when you look up at the night sky, the brightest stars staring you in the face all have magnitudes of about zero plus or minus one. Now, the other stars that you see that aren't quite as bright as those stars are gonna be stars that have magnitudes of two, three, and then pushing towards four on the dimmer side. So here in our city, as we look up at the sky, there's some light pollution in the sky, which means the dimmest stars in the sky are not quite visible to our naked eye. Most of the stars we see are two, three, and four stars. The brightest stars we see are minus one, zero, and one stars. And if you were to go up into the mountains where you are away from city light lights on a really, really clear night, you can see even dimmer stars of about magnitude five or six. But once you get to magnitude six, that's about the dimmest magnitude visible to the naked eye. Now, does that mean that there are no stars in the sky that have magnitudes greater than six? And the answer is no, there are stars that have magnitudes much greater than six but you can't see them with the naked eye. You would need a telescope to see them. 
So magnitude seven and above are only visible through a telescope. And the higher the magnitude the star has, the bigger the telescope you need to see it. For example, the Hubble Space Telescope, one of the most powerful telescopes that's ever been built, can see stars of magnitude about 30, which is extremely dim. The last thing I want to talk about is something called absolute magnitude, which is different than apparent magnitude. It's basically a way of comparing the luminosity of stars, the actual brightness of stars. And here's how it works. So we just talked about apparent magnitude, which compares how bright stars appear to be from Earth at their actual distances, whether they're nine light years or 900 light years away. So it, it compares what we call apparent brightness. Absolute magnitude compares how bright stars would appear if they were all equally far away. And that distance is set at 33 light years. Now, you may wonder why would we pick 33 light years as a standard distance? Well, you may recall from your reading that another measurement of distance from using the parallax method of measuring distance is something called the parsec, which is short for parallax seconds. You don't need to remember that right now other than to know that the parsec is another unit of distance that astronomers use. And so the absolute magnitude system is based on a distance of 10 parsecs. Well, one parsec is approximately 3.3 light years. So 10 parsecs is about 33 light years. And since we are more familiar with light years than parsecs, we'll go ahead and use light years. So if I were to move all the stars to 33 light years away and now compare their apparent magnitudes, that's what their absolute magnitude is. So let me help you understand what this means. Let's imagine that we have three stars that are different distances from Earth. This star is an extremely luminous star. This star is a very low luminosity star. And this star is a star with a luminosity somewhere in between. Even though the most luminous star is this one, it's so far away that to our eyes, it's actually the dimmest. And even though the least luminous star is this one, it's so close to us that to our eyes, it's actually the brightest. And so their apparent magnitudes reflect how bright they appear to our eyes, but not how bright they really are. That is their luminosity. Now, if somehow I could take these stars and move them to a fixed distance away from the Earth, so they were all the same distance away. Now their differences in brightness are not a function of distance, but purely their luminosities. So if I were to put these 33 light years away, or 10 parsecs, they would have a new apparent magnitude. So this very high luminosity star, maybe now would have a magnitude of minus two, which means it's very bright in the sky. This low luminosity star should have a magnitude that is much larger than minus two, because they're all the same distance away now. And indeed, it would. Now, it's the magnitude 6 star. And this medium luminosity star should have a medium magnitude. And indeed, it does. It still has a magnitude of 3. And so now those magnitudes accurately reflect their luminosities in comparison to each other. That is what we mean by absolute magnitude. Now, this also tells us one other thing. If I compare the apparent magnitude to the absolute magnitude, this makes some sense based on their distances. For example, star A, which is this star right here, the really high luminosity star, has an apparent magnitude of six, but an absolute magnitude of minus two. Since absolute magnitude is how bright it would appear to our eyes if it were at 33 light years, and apparent magnitude is how bright it is at its actual distance, since it has a much higher magnitude, and therefore appears dimmer to the eye than it would if it were 33 light years away, I know that in reality, it must be much farther than 33 light years away. If I look at star B, which is this low luminosity star, its apparent magnitude is zero, but its absolute magnitude is six, which means that when placed at 33 light years, it's actually a much dimmer star. And yet at its actual distance away, it's a much brighter star. That must mean that this star is much closer than 33 light years. And then lastly, star C, the third star, it was a magnitude three star when it was at its actual distance. And when we put it at 33 light years, it's still a magnitude three star. That means it is actually at about 33 light years away. Its apparent magnitude and its absolute magnitude are really no different from each other because it is at 33 light years away. So by comparing a star's apparent magnitude to its absolute magnitude, you get something that should accurately reflect its distance from Earth relative to that 33 light year mark.